The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. If you've got an idea you'd like to see built, why not send it to The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. On today's episode, we're going to be celebrating Thanksgiving by making a project out of leftovers. Ew, not these, actually electronics leftovers from previous projects in our show. All right, well, let's look around the shop and see what we have too much of besides fun. All right, got a bunch of these um, PIC32 development kits. I've also got some chip kits, the Arduino compatible one. We had an unfortunate pinball accident and this one got fried. This one, it didn't get completely fried, but some of its pins, its IO broke. So most of it's still useful. So we can't use it in our pinball machines, but we could use it as a general purpose controller. What else? Uh, oh. When we did Expedition Awareness, we tried to use these little mini stepper motors to drive the cameras. They are too weak, but uh, they're nice little motors and they could drive something that didn't need a lot of torque or weight, so we should use these for something. Got two of those total. There's not other ones at home. There's not another PIC32, isn't it? I have more microcontrollers than pants. By far! A bunch of LEDs, a bunch of pinball parts with a shock. See, here's what happens. When you do prototypes and designs and electrical engineering for a living, your hobby has to be something even more complicated. And that's why I choose pinball. Oh, what else we got in here? Uh, some LED segments, bunch of LEDs, more LEDs. Oh, I've got some motor controllers. Those might be useful. Well, here's some stuff that I have that I really have no use for, but it has value. So. I need to think of what I can, oh, hold on, I just got a text message. Oh great, it's another photo of my sister's cat and my niece. Man, look at the size of that thing. It really needs to exercise. In fact, a lot of cats need to exercise, but their owners aren't always home. What if I built an automated cat exercise machine, something that would cause the cat to move around? So according to YouTube, cats love laser pointers. What if we used those little stepper motors to create like a virtual laser pointer driver? They could rotate two axes of a arm, so to speak, that could have a little cheap red laser pointer on it. And every so often this device could turn on and the laser pointer would shine around the floor and hopefully get the attention of the cats. So it could automatically, you know, exercise them while you were away. So we also found this, it's a motion sensor left over from the Aaron Matthews uh, project. So what this device could do, it could just be sitting there and then if it sees a cute animal, you know, moving in its field of view, then it's like, ah, now I'm going to do use my laser pointer. Bzzz. So just for proof of concept, what we're going to do is we're going to make two axes of freedom. There's going to be the X axis here and the Y axis here. So we can make something really, really cheapy with tape to prove the concept works and then we'll make something that looks good. Okay, so I'm not sure if the chip kit's gonna make it. This one that was kind of damaged had some more problems, so eh, that's probably my fault. So what I did was I got this um, little development board that my friend, the Longhorn engineer made. Pretty cute, huh? He uses a propeller and you can plug it right into your computer's USB port and program it and then it has all the pinouts here. So I don't think we're gonna run this off a computer when it's running, but you know, I've got this and it's easy to use. So I made a little shield for it here. And what this shield does is it has two H-Bridge motor drivers and plugs. So we can use this to drive our stepper motors. See how this just goes in like this? Yeah, small and compact. And then our other leftover part, which is the motion sensor, we can bolt that right on as well. So what this can do is basically power everything and we won't hook this up to a computer, but we can hook a power jack up using a USB plug and power it that way. 
Also, one, another thing to think about is USB only has 500 milliamps of power available, so it's not enough to drive two separate motors, but our separate power supply can do it. So I'm programming the EEPROM so it'll stay resident. We won't lose it when the memory goes off. All right, so I unplug it. Then I plug in my X motor, my Y motor, and then I give it power. This one's being weird, but uh, yeah, it appears to be working. So next thing we're gonna do is make it go off the motion sensor and then also make a mount for these things to drive the laser pointer. So I took apart the, uh, the laser pointer and I'm gluing the button on and I'm also wiring the batteries in separately so it can be powered remotely by our microcontroller. So yeah, that should work. I'll just fill this with hot glue and that way it'll stay forever. Okay, so there were three batteries in there, 1.5 volts each, 4.5 volts, five volts should be close enough. So it should just turn on when voltage is applied. Yep, there it goes. Cool, so we can control the laser turning on and off too. This year, we've seen the passing of many people in the tech industry. Apple co-founder Steve Jobs, Unix and C language inventor Dennis Ritchie, and former Motorola CEO Bob Galvin. Each of these visionaries changed the world through their unique understanding of technology. Element 14 wants to hear from you. Who do you think are going to be our future visionaries? Who's working on inventions today that will change the world tomorrow? Join the discussion at element14.com forward slash innovators and tell us who you think the pioneers of tomorrow will be. The staff at Element 14 will use your suggestions and feature those innovators in the months ahead. Everyone who contributes an idea will have a chance to win a new XL Star development board. Developed exclusively by Element 14 and Freescale, the XL Star lets engineers work on up to 64 kilobytes of C or assembly code and features an onboard accelerometer allowing free fall, shake, tap, and orientation detection for a ton of cool embedded applications. So head on over to element14.com forward slash innovators and tell us who you think the innovators of tomorrow will be. And now, back to the show. All right, so we need to think about how to make the laser mount. So the laser pointer is a little tube about like that big, and it needs to go in two directions, up and down and left and right. So if you think about this on an end view, what I'll probably do first is make the up and down motion. So we'll have our motor here, shaft comes out, and then it'll go into a disc with that, and then the light, or the laser, will be mounted to that disc. Then what we need to have below that is our horizontal movement, or our XY movement. So. We don't want to center it on the motor because then this thing will be kind of lopsided. So we're going to put the center on the thing right here. So there'll be a disc here, which causes it to turn left and right. So the other end view would look like this. We've got our motor, got our thing that moves the light, the LED. And then below that, we'll have another wheel, which is driven by other stepper motors. So this is our X axis and this is our Y axis. All right, I've got the laser mounted on the up-down position, and uh, I guess we can give this a test now. We don't have all the, we need some uh, homing sensors on here, but we can at least give it a try with the controller. To control this thing, I've got a real leftover right here. Let's see if it works. Up, down. Okay, that one's pretty good. And then left and right. Yeah, left and right needs some kinks worked out of it, but looks like it's pretty much working. So this board will be mounted here when it's actually done, and we'll probably have an enclosure actually so the cats can't destroy it. Oh, I'm sad. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, now I've got the laser actually controlled by the microcontroller. So it'll only turn on when it's doing its routine. And the microcontroller is 3.3 volts, and I have a MOSFET here, which is logic level triggered, five volts. So what I did was I hooked up the line from the microcontroller into a transistor to make a simple not gate, so that could drive at five volts the MOSFET. So now I have an enable routine for the separate motors and the lasers. So right now, this is gonna simulate the programming. You push the trigger, and now it's on. See how the laser's on, it moves around. So this will be the part where you're actually programming how you want it to move for your cats. And then when you push the button, it will be done programming and then it'll go inert. See that? That way it's not you know running the stepper motor driver when there's no cats around. But when it's running, when it detects motion, it'll be like whoop, and then it'll start doing the program, and then it'll go when it's done. I can reactivate it too. I am a T1000 targeting system engaged. Target acquired, terminating now. 
Okay, the next step is making it so that device can record your movement so it can repeat it later automatically. So we saw that we can move it up, down, left, right with the Atari joystick. And my thought is, we have four bits that represent up, down, left, right. Like this, up, down, left, right. And then obviously we have bytes. So we could actually, one byte could store two frames of movement, up, down, left, right. So we store frame one here, then we store frame two here, and then down here. We store frame three, four, so on, so on. So one byte will get you two frames of movement. So the next thing to think about is how fast we want the sampling rate to be. And I would say, I don't know, let's just say 30 times a second. So what I've done here is I've made a program that will now log your movements and store it to the EEPROM. So we'll store something to the EEPROM and that'll make the part of the program that will read it back and then we'll see if it worked. We'll make something really obvious, like a square, so we can know that we got the data right. Okay, I have an opto switch here that will sense a center or home position. Let's give you a little demo of it. I've just got it so when it uh, trips the sensor, the laser turns on. See? Beep. So that's how, you know, if it stops here for some reason, it can find the sensor and then say, okay, that's my home position, and then start there on the next turn. All right, so now we've got the um, sensor for the tab, and there's also a tab, so you see it just homed itself, and now it's starting. So the idea is it'll always start at the center position when it runs the routine, that way it doesn't you know, have this accumulated error where it starts to go over to the left or the right. So yeah, I think it's ready for a field or living room cat test trial. Greetings, exalted one. I am Benjamin J. Heckendorn, modder of electronics and the brother of your owner. I am here today to offer you this cat exerciser. If you use it, you may live well past the age of 10. It is hardworking and will serve you well. lifestyle. <laughs> But I spent hours building it. And also, you're huge! Chuba da le da no der track da do do. Do do ba ni do da da chuba ka da no der. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be working with FPGAs, Field Programmable Gate Arrays, and seeing the cool things that you can do with them. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.